Hey YouTube. Yep, the Ender 3S Plus didn't work. So I ended up uh, getting, uh, sending it back and getting the Ender 3S1 Pro. So we'll give this printer a try. Uh, the Plus model was nice. Um, you know, I did some nice prints, but I continue to have the absolute temperature issue. Um, I reached out to them, but by the time they got back, I was already sending the other one back. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, Creality said that they would send out, you know, new replacement parts, but, uh, like I said, I, I kind of had enough with uh, trying to tamper around with it. Wasn't getting anywhere. So I ended up shipping that one out and getting the Ender 3S1 Pro. So let's open it up. Let's take a look at what we get. I'm assuming it's similar to the S1 uh, Plus. Just uh, a smaller size. Obviously, there's a little... A few more perks that you get with it, but uh, yeah, let's see. So once again, very nice uh, packaging. Everything's got a place, uh, a spot to go. Um, just very nice, you know. All right, I'll give it everything out and I'll start assembling it. So getting all this stuff out of the package, this is what you get. So we got the build plate out. That's kind of an assembly. It's nice uh, surround with a nice, nice large shelf. Build plate, PEI sheet. We got the wire harness attached. Uh, here's the gantry with the light bar, which is really nice. Um, we'll see how it lights up. The plate, you got your plug, spatula, little clip here for a wire harness. And then you got the uh, filament holder, the screen, the holder for the screen, filament holder goes together. You got the extruder, then you got some more, you got some filament. And then instructions, uh, a little tip sheet for uh, materials and what they recommend as far as you know, speeds and temperatures. Um, and then we have the uh, goodie bag with all the tools, uh, flash drive, USB stick, nozzle clearing, and I think there's some snips in there too. So, all right, we'll start assembling this thing and I'll bring you along the way. So this is the assembly of the extruder to the gantry. You got this little bracket. It's got four holes, one large hole. Um, and you can see kind of where where they get lined up. And basically you just, you know, kind of hook that on there. And then that one screw is kind of holding everything on until you get the bolts. So that's how it goes together. Got the one, two, three, four different bolts. One thing you want to do is try to make sure it's not too tight, which these bearings are really, really assembled good. It's got a little bit of a play on there, but you can always change it. If they're too loose, you can tighten them up with this nut, or obviously if they're too tight, you can do the same. So this uh, gantry is actually really nice. So I'm not not gonna mess with the thing. So next thing we'll we'll take the gantry. We'll put it together to the base. Uh, it should be four bolts, two on each side. So all right. So we're getting the gantry onto the base. I kind of tucked it over to the side where uh, I'm assembling. the bolts to the gantry. Right. 
one thing to note is you definitely want to keep the bolts loose on the entry and then you want to slide this uh, X down so that it's at the lowest you can get it and then tighten it up. All right, got the wires all connected. Um, got the Z, the uh, filament feed, and I think the light bar all connected. Uh, one thing to note is you got 230 or 115. So you want to make sure you switch to whichever you need. Uh, for me, I had to switch it over to 115. So you could just peel that back. They offer or give you this little screwdriver. And then you just flip it which way you, you need it. So it comes, or at least it was, in the 230 um, position. So I had to just switch it over to 115. Uh, the gantry put on the bracket just slides on to that little to this bracket here plugs it into the uh, to the end of the uh, to the head and then made sure it wasn't you know tangled or anything and festooned properly and then there's a nice little label visual where you slide in the uh, the harness there and then you got two wires here um, both get plugged in on the side so and then just comes down so um, also assembled the touchscreen so there's a cable here that plugs into this touchscreen you have the bracket there's three bolts on the side um, that just get mounted to the side of the uh, base here and uh, it just plugs in okay we'll fire it up here in a minute all right, we spun it around. I also attached the filament holder, which this holder is really nice. There's nice bearings. This spins really good. Uh, and then we attached the, the cable to the uh, feed sensor uh, with the arrow going in the direction of the filament to the head. So, um, all right. This is a really sharp printer. It's, it is smaller than the the plus um the plus i believe is a 300 by 300 this is a two 220 by 220 i believe so it's definitely smaller but let's plug her in turn it on the lights on that light is a very nice addition I mean, it's a simple light, but it, it's real clean. It's sharp, so. It's really quiet. All right, we're going to go ahead and go to settings. We'll go to leveling. Let it do its thing. Let's go ahead. We're going to come back before we do the leveling. We'll go to PLA settings. I always like to do a 215 by 65. We set that. We can go to ready, go to manual, and then we can go ahead and preheat. So now it's starting to preheat. We'll let that uh, heat up and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let it do its auto leveling. So um, I let it heat up, do its auto leveling, and then uh, we'll do a manual level to just make sure everything's square. And then we'll go ahead and uh, fire up a test print. All right, the printer's heated up. You can kind of see that there. We're gonna go ahead and do our leveling. So we'll go to settings, go to leveling. It's gonna do a little zero.
so we'll go ahead and hit our auto level, which it's there, and we'll hit start. It's going to go to the different points, do its little measurement, long, All right, it did its uh, auto level. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the auxiliary and manual. So what we'll do is we'll go to auxiliary level, we'll take it to a position, and then just the paper that they include for the materials, we'll use that as a reference point. And that's pretty, uh, pretty loose. So we can adjust that. Accordingly, and actually, it's kind of a lot, so we'll lower it down using the Z, and we'll just continue on going around, making sure that it's tight and then going around to the different positions. Okay, we'll have to loosen that up. All right. Here we go. going around to make sure it's level. There we go. All right. All right, we're finishing up the auto level. I uh, put some filament on the spool, ran it through the, uh, the detect switch, and then we're gonna head, go ahead and go back home. I'm gonna go to ready, actually. I want to do a manual Z or home. Okay, it's doing its auto home. Then next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to lift it up a little bit, run some filament down, uh, extrude it out a little bit, and then we'll run a print. Okay. Ran it down, put it through the extruder. You just got to hold this back, push down the filament, and then I pushed enough out so that it kind of clears it out. Looks like they were laying some gray or white stuff in there. All right, we'll grab the uh, disc. We'll pop it in there. We'll go to uh, print settings. And it looks like we got a rabbit, cat, handle, and a bit. I don't know what the last one is, but let's do a rabbit. And we'll run it at 215, 65, 100%, with an offset of 285. Go ahead and run it. Grab this little guy off of there. Clean that off. There we go. Give this little touch off. Let's see how far Z. Go to Z and adjust it if needed. Definitely has to come down.
Well, it's been a couple days. Did some prints. Did this octopus. Uh, had some issues with it. Uh, stringed up. Uh, I think it, my Z was off a little bit, a little too high. So I trimmed that in. I probably could run another one. It would probably be fine. Uh, did a few different prints. Made some custom ones for my kids. These things turned out really, really good. This bunny, the gold, uh, that's maybe one of the issues that I've seen with this printer so far. Is that um, I tried the power outage and when I went to restore, it didn't give the option to continue. So it's a bunny with no ears. I re-ran it, everything turned out really good. And then I also did a taller figure, Groot. Um, obviously it's two-toned and that's because I ran out of the gold filament. And uh, the sensor up here did its job. And basically once, once it ran out of filament, it went, the head went to over to this home position and waited for me to put new filament in. So I put a gray one in and took off. Everything turned out really good on this. Um, overall, I think uh, this printer is very nice. Obviously, I got to, you know, dial in the settings, make sure I'm uh, getting those correct. But overall, this is uh, this is much better than the Plus. So uh, definitely highly recommend this Pro. It's the Ender One, Ender Three S One Pro. And as always, you know, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.